Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to October Lake in Planet Zoo, a series where we're working on creating this really large park situated in the Canadian Highlands. In today's episode, we are going to be building a habitat for a pair of snow leopards. If that does sound good to you and you do like today's video, please do give the video a like. And of course, do subscribe for more Planet Zoo videos. I upload Planet Zoo videos every Wednesday at about 5 p.m. UK time and Jurassic World Evolution videos every Friday at 5 p.m. UK time. That took me a second to remember. <laughs> Anyways, with the intro out of the way, let's talk about today's build, which is going to be again for a pair of snow leopards. These are animals I have wanted to work with for quite a long time. In fact, when I started October Lake, my goal was to kind of um, make a park so that I could really explore building habitat for cold weather animals. Across my kind of YouTube history here, uh, I plan I mainly did uh, Planet Zoo videos for more tropical and temperate animals. I actually even had a whole tiger park called Alisund Arctic Wildlife Park, but that focused almost entirely on the animals within that specific Arctic DLC and not actually with any of the base game cold weather animals, which there are quite a lot of them. We have like three bear species, you know, like the snow leopards, we have the wolves, there's so many which we can still explore and I intended to explore them in this park. But then somehow I got carried away and built a tropical house, so <laughs> that concept uh, got delayed somewhat. So here we are really getting into the bulk of the cold weather animals and I'm kind of liking how it came about, like if you notice how the park has evolved. We've kind of been going from a more sort of, we started out quite tropical with the otters and the uh, lemurs and stuff like that. And then as we went forward and up the hill, we started getting colder with animals which are maybe a bit more temperate. And then now as we've come up here, we've really transitioned into animals which are significantly more suited for cold weather like the red panda, the Japanese macaque, all of which definitely I think have uh, more of an, a cold weather vibe. So we're definitely getting into that territory now which I've wanted to explore so it's really nice to see that and I'm very excited for where we're gonna go with it. Of course in today's episode we are focusing on the snow leopard in particular, a really beautiful incredible animal, one of my favorite big cats absolutely fascinating creatures and uh, this inc genuinely uh, just so cool the beautiful and cute and every amazing thing you could say about an animal like this they just are the best and uh, we're gonna build a relatively large habitat for a pair of them they're actually quite small more sm uh, smaller than I realized they were gonna be so the habitat is plenty of space for them as you can see here we are building a little guest viewing area which is elevated. This is actually kind of rare for animals in this park. For the most part, um, what I've been doing is building guest viewing areas which are either eye level or in fact below where the animals would be. So the animals kind of have a sense of security knowing that they have the high ground. In this instance, um, I decided to instead give the snow leopards a cave and uh, some space where the guests can't actually see them so that they have that for security instead of having this like higher up position. What they instead have is areas where the guests can't really see them at all, so they can hide if they want to. Again, providing that security is so vital for animals. And uh, in, in reality, I would have loved to give them a bit more space to hide a little bit. So maybe I'll go back and like maybe make a couple of those uh, glass areas opaque and stuff like that so they can have a bit more security. But overall, I think they're pretty happy with what they have here. And uh, over here you can see I just made a little pond for them in the middle. They're not really that big of swimmers in real life, but a little pond I think doesn't go amiss with a lot of big cats. They'll want to drink from it. Cats love running water. Um, well, they don't love being in running water unless they're like a tiger or something or a jaguar. But they love drinking running water. And if you have a pet cat, you, you'll know that. If you leave a tap on, they'll drink from it for some reason. Oh my god. That just um, reminds me of my old cat. Um, I used to have a, a, just this adorable, adorable cat named Lulu and uh, unfortunately she passed away but she was just the weirdest thing, like she'd lick plastic all the time, like cats are bizarre animals, they're so cute but they are such strange creatures. And yeah, <laughs> um, in, yeah, and here you can see me actually start work on the cave itself, uh, we're building a flat rock floor 
for the cave and um, what we're going to do is have those glass areas viewing area for the guests but um, they're going to be like um well actually I can't remember if I used the one-way glass pieces I don't think I did but um, what we'll end up doing is I'll block out one of those so that the, again the leopards have a little bit more privacy but I don't know if I did that in this episode or off screen so we'll see there's a lot of cinematics in the end where you can see the leopards actually using all these different features so look forward to that Anyways, while we're doing all this rock work, which is a lot of rock work, let's talk a little bit about the snow leopards themselves. They're also known as ounces, which is really weird because I've never like known the word ounce to mean anything other than a, you know the unit of measurement. But apparently, it is derived from an old French word named ounce, which was actually uh, used for the European lynx, and uh, no one really knows how the word itself like a rose but it's it's a quite an interesting uh, term because it's just weird calling this thing an ounce like I've always just known it as a snow leopard but you know uh, the scientific name is Panthera unkia and um, these guys are genetically quite interesting they're called snow leopards but they're actually more closely related to tigers they're part of the Panthera genus so you know that includes tigers leopards jaguars so many uh, features like that but for all the animals that are actually call leopards, none of them are related that closely to each other. So you have like clouded leopards, which aren't even in the Panthera genus, they are Neophilus. They're way different, uh, they're like way like away from these, these uh, other big cats in terms of relation. And the snow leopard and the leopard aren't actually that closely related, they split a while ago. And um, they're, like I said, more closely related to tigers, which is super interesting. But apparently as well, at some point in the evolution, uh, genetic analysis has shown that they've at some point hybridized with lions and leopards, which is really interesting as well. It's kind of like how um, humans at some point hybridized with Neanderthals and uh, Densovans, and that's why we are like the way we are right now, is we have genetic material from those other human species. So it's very, very interesting. But yeah, um, I think of course the idea that it's called the snow leopard comes from the fact that they have these beautiful spots, these rosettes, and they're so so gorgeous, like, just the coloration of these animals is beautiful. But um, yeah, they've got this really nice grey, almost a little bit yellowy, but mostly grey coloration, silvery, with these dark rosette patterns. They live in alpine areas, of course, much uh, really high elevations from 3,000 to nearly 5,000 meters in height. So that's pretty much entirely mountainous areas. Uh, they range all across Central Asia, so you know from the Himalayas to bits of China, Afghanistan, even bits of like Siberia and stuff like that, all over the place. But there's not an awful lot of them. There's somewhere between 5,000 and 10,000 adults in the world, um, but we're not really sure. They are considered vulnerable due to poaching and stuff like that, which is really unfortunate. But in captivity, there's actually a lot of really good breeding programs. These are one of the big cats that seem to do pretty okay in captivity, actually. And they seem to be able to breed relatively without any issue, which is a good sign for an animal in captivity, is that they can breed in a way that's not stressful for them. I think it does show that they're a bit more comfortable than other big cats. Uh, that one I'm not 100% sure, of course. I just know that other big cats do have a struggle more, for example, tigers and lions aren't 100% suited for captivity at all but uh, with the snow leopards they seem to be a bit more comfortable which is it's good to see because they have been breeding relatively well. In fact I think it was uh, last year or something there was like a baby boom in the North American uh, zoos with snow leopards like they were getting loads of babies which was really nice to see. But yeah <laughs> such cool animals. Talking about their like um, general appearance and uh, phenotypic traits They've got these really thick, uh, flexible tails, which have so many functions. Like, they are really thick, they store fat, kind of like a camel's hump. They're also covered in fur, which allows them to use it like a blanket when they're sleeping, which you can see in the game when they curl up and they use it a little bit like a blanket. It's so cute. But also, interestingly, is they use it for b uh, balance. So, um, if you may have seen some videos of snow leopards online, they love playing with each other and like jumping into the air like really high and you can see that they use their tails uh, to actually balance themselves while they do things like that and in the wild when they're climbing rocky terrain they use that tail to like make sure that they're not gonna fall so that's really cool I think. They're um, 
not actually a super aggressive big cat. In fact, I've only ever been two reported attacks on humans, and both of those were incredibly unusual with both animals either being rabid or like um, starving. So they generally speaking are not going to attack a person at all, like they just don't feel the need to. Very much like an animal like a cheetah or something where they just don't feel the need to attack people. We're not natural prey. Um, the unnatural prey is just easier for them to access. So what they hunt in the wild is kind of like mountain um, mountain herbivores like mark whores or you know like... I believe they even eat red pandas if I'm not mistaken. I'm not 100% sure on that one so don't quote me on that but I think I've heard about that. But um, yeah, very very interesting um, behavior in the wild. They've, there's a photo if you look up on their... Uh, if you just look up snow leopards and marmots, there's a photo of one just eating a marmot. Not like a gory photo, she's got the marmot in his... You know what, don't look it up. <laughs> but if you want to see a marmot getting eaten by a snow leopard, that's... Yeah, it eats a marmot, basically. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Uh, the only animal it probably would not attack in its home range besides humans is the adult yak. So yaks are these massive, like, you know, bovine animals. They're just huge actually i don't know if they even consider bovines they're cattle but they're just big big hefty creatures like incredibly powerful animals that you just do not want to get in the way of so yeah <laughs> they probably avoid that as well but uh yeah they're very very interesting animals and i hope you guys have enjoyed learning a little bit more about them um i would love to see one in captivity i haven't seen one before Again, in captivity, surprisingly, they do quite well, which is really nice to hear. And uh, we will hopefully have to keep an eye on that for reintroduction programs and stuff. But I think it's really cool and beautiful animals. Just, I feel like I say that every episode about every animal, but I just, I love animals. And I'm not like, I don't want to be shy about it because they're just cool. And I love sharing my love for them. And the snow leopard is no exception. In fact, there are no exceptions, I don't think. I love pretty much all animals. I can't imagine one which would make me, you know. I mean, there's some animals which I'm eh, a little bit less keen on. Like, I'm still kind of afraid of cockroaches, but still, I respect them as animals. I think they're pretty cool. You know, so it's like, I think in every episode, you're going to hear me gush about whatever animal is going to be on screen. So, but we should, you know what? Why not? You know, like, let's just talk about how cool animals are and stuff like that, because they are the stars of this game. And not only that, they are one of the purest things about the natural world, and it's just nice to talk about them. <laughs> Anyways, here you can see me building the kind of the front-facing guest viewing area, so just where uh, we are along the main path, guests can look in from here. As you can see, it's curved a little bit, and in this curved area, I will end up replacing the glass with some of the wood pieces, again to provide the snow leopards with just that little bit of privacy to allow them to can hide away if they want to hide away from the guests a little bit. So I think that leather worked pretty well. If I'm, you know, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, snow leopards actually have a decent amount of uh, privacy here. I might add a little bit more. On the left, actually, which you might not have uh, noticed because I, I did cut out some of the footage, we built a bit of a staff area as well. So um, staff are able to access this entire area. There's a few staff buildings inside of that, like a vet, a staff center. And um, what will be generally how that will work is that whatever habitat is next to this will also benefit from that same building. Over here on the top, because I realized the snow leopards would really benefit from being able to access the top of the cave and bask up there from on the like on the warm rocks, I created this uh, second layer of fencing above here, and I think that looks quite cool. Uh, I, what I wanted to do is also explore this type of fencing where. It curves in a little bit to prevent the animals from like jumping out too far. And I've just used some rope there to simulate what would otherwise probably be like um, wire or something like that instead of rope. I think the rope works fine to be fair. These animals aren't going to escape that way. And it gives them a little bit of space up here where they can actually look down at the guests as well. So again, they're giving a bit of a, a bit of that high ground so that they they feel a bit more comfortable as well, although they are still lower than that one guest elevated viewing area in the back over there. They do come up here sometimes, but not an awful lot. It is quite cool to watch them like explore this habitat. One funny thing about this is um, in the game, these animals have jumping animations, but they do it kind of like almost in slow motion. 
which I find so funny. It just looks really funny when they do it, but it's it's really cool watching them re explore this habitat. As you can see, I made it a very rocky habitat with a lot of climbing areas, a lot of exploration space. In fact, like to access this climbing up area, the uh, jag uh, the leopards would have to actually walk through the cave, come out, and then go up here. So really fun exploration space for them and uh, they really make the full use of it I think which is really nice to see. Also by the way I just want to apologize very quickly if you can hear some rattling in the background. I've been having some issues with my fridge recently and it just can't stop rattling for some reason. Is that a bad sign? Should I get it fixed? Probably. Will I do it? I don't know. I'm a lazy person. We'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, while, while we're finishing up this habitat let's just talk a little bit about the channel in general. Uh, so, like I said, 19th is coming up pretty soon. There's going to be a lot of Prehistoric Kingdom videos coming out. Um, Planet Zoo videos aren't going anywhere again. Going to keep working on October Lake. Probably returning to Sanikov Land next month at some point. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution continuing as usual as well. That's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. I'm very happy with the park build I'm doing. And uh, quite interested in seeing that finish. It's going to have a lot of modded species in there. So it will probably keep going for a long time while I... Uh, look for more mods essentially to add to the game which I'm very excited about. Uh, I'm not going to mod Planet Zoo anytime soon. Um, that's mainly because I, I'm very happy with what we have in the base game. Like I'm not really, I don't feel the need to add any mods to the base game. Not until at least that development is fully finished because I know there's going to be more DLCs for Planet Zoo, more content and I'm not like I do not want to really mod it until um, we get all those DLCs and they fully finish development. And I really kind of hope they don't finish it for a while. I want to get more DLCs. I want to see more work being done in this game because the potential is limitless. Planet Zoo is an incredible game. It is my favorite game probably of all time. My, it used to be Zoo Tycoon 2 and now probably Planet Zoo is my favorite game of all time. And uh, I just, uh, yeah, there's just limitless potential here. I'm, I just think we could get so much more, especially with the aquatic DLC, adding in so many new mechanics and these aquatic animals and diving. Oh, I just cannot wait. I cannot wait for them to really push the boat out with things like maybe an aviary pack. Oh, that would be cool. You know, stuff like that. Or even just regular animals which we haven't seen yet. Like, there's so many things we could see for this game and I am really here for it. So that's why I won't be modding the game anytime soon. If you want to see like modded content and stuff, do watch my Jurassic World Evolution series. That will cover a lot of the modded stuff. Um, that's kind of going on in the community so we'll talk about it there but not for Planet 2 so yeah that's just my stance on that I don't know why I decided to bring it up in this video it's just because uh, I have seen a lot of Planet 2 modding going on but just not something I'm super interested in right now uh, anyways just um, looking at what we're doing on screen just finishing up this guest viewing area here again it's mainly stairs but there is like a pseudo elevator which I add again for disability access always important to think about that sort of thing um, that is again another cool feature you could add to Planet Zoo, so you could have guests with wheelchairs, stuff like that. Just more mechanics in the game to make it seem more, you know, more interesting. But yeah, we're pretty much coming towards the end of today's video. There's not an awful lot left to do besides finish up this guest area. And I just want to say again, thank you so much to everyone who has been watching the channel. The channel has been like such a great little thing for me to be doing over the past year. It's been like such a fun hobby it really kept me kind of being creative and enjoying this game and um, it's really nice to see that we've got a little community that's developed and I like seeing a lot of the same names pop up and stuff like that it's really nice and of course the Planet Zoo community as a whole is a really wholesome place and I really love seeing everyone like interact and ah, it's just a lot of fun so I want to say thank you to everyone who has been watching who've been supporting the channel uh, from the start, there's been some people here who've been here since like my first few videos, so big 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 thank you there. Uh, just on the screen of course we are finishing the guest building here and that's pretty much it for the snow leopard habitat. I've got some really fun cinematics for you guys at the end and uh, yeah I hope you guys enjoy that. Now that the video is wrapping up I just want to say of course uh, thank you so much for watching. If you did like the video please do leave a like down below. Do subscribe for more Planet Zoo and uh, other game content like Jurassic World Evolution. Prehistoric Kingdom coming out really soon, so look forward to that. And of course, um, comment down below if you have any suggestions, if you want to chat to me. I'm always replying to the comments, so yeah. And as always, guys, 
I'll see you in the next one. Bye.